Can we have Mr. Ross Webb come forward, please? You are looking at the greatest goal scorer in the history of soccer in Nova Scotia, right here. You could even argue that Ross Webb is the greatest soccer player in the province's history. Putting the ball in the net was his forte. He could score from almost anywhere on the pitch at virtually any time, using a skill he developed as a little guy in his native Portsmouth, England, and then honed at Sackville High School under coach Don McVicker, at St. Mary's University under last year's Hall of Fame inductee Roy Clements, and under a bevy of coaches during many years at the senior level. Those who know Ross Webb will talk of his modesty, how quickly he will credit his teammates for any success he had. Those of you close enough to the stage tonight likely see him getting read to with embarrassment, which is endearing as well. But his stats, his stats are crazy. While goal scoring totals in high school are unavailable, it's a given he led Sackville High in scoring. He also helped his Kingfishers win three provincial championships. Coach McVicker describes young Ross this way. He was unique in his play. I noticed that immediately. He was uh, what we used to call a center forward, probably now they call a striker. And uh, he, could, he could receive the ball in what we call traffic, I said, or amongst the defenders, protecting the ball. Uh, he was very skilled, either scoring or passing, I'll put it that way. The ball came to him, he could protect it, and if they gave him a chance, he would make a nimble move with a shot on goal, but he was unselfish. Here we have a prolific scorer who was unselfish because he would pass to his wingmen either side exceptionally well. Weaknesses, I didn't see, I didn't see any, uh, perhaps defensively. That could be uh, in the extreme, I might say, that he could have worked a little harder on that. But there was no problem there. We had a, always had a very strong half line, midfielders, what they call now. And uh, so he didn't need to work too hard defensively. Uh, but, uh, and he was a striker or a center forward, so there would be no need for that. But he was very adept at head, heading the ball. He knew where his teammates were. He knew where the, where the opponents were. And he knew where the goalie was. <laughs> all the time, even when he had his back to the net. McVicker, like most coaches, is reluctant to compare the many players they have encountered, but he makes an exception with this man right here. There were very strong athletes over my career, but this guy, no question, had to be the best one in my 33 years of coaching soccer. After playing senior soccer at only 15 years of age, Ross was recruited by St. Mary's, by Clements, and thus began a career of glorious moments. In his first university game in 1978, he scored six goals. And a soccer game that ends 2-0 is considered high scoring, so six in a game. In his first university season, he scored 37 goals, a CIS record that has never seriously been challenged. He scored eight in one game, a 10-1 win over Moncton. He was CIS Rookie of the Year and a first team All-Canadian, an honor he received three more times, plus he was even featured in Sports Illustrated after that freshman year. After that first year, he was drafted early in the first round by the fledgling North American Soccer League, but would have been ineligible for his next four years of varsity soccer at St. Mary's. He declined the pro contract and said many years later, I have no regrets. Nor did St. Mary's. Ross won four more scoring championships, helped Smew to two league titles and an appearance in the national final in 1978, a disappointing 2-0 loss to Alberta. Jim Seide was a teammate of Ross during the high school years and then at St. Mary's. He recalls meeting Ross for the first time and then competing with him. About him, but I really didn't know who he was. And that kind of um, signifies what Ross was, a, was about. He was a team guy and, and you know, like he, in high school, he, I think he has a record, you know, 500 goals or something like that. And, and, um, and what people don't know about that is half the time he only played half games because Mr. McVicker would take him out of games after he's got four goals or five goals just so you're not 
you know, running up the score. And I know that used to used to bother Ross a little bit, and he said, you know, like, why can't he just put me at fullback or something like that so I can play the full game? And, um, but he, he, I saw him score goals in, in high school the same as he did in university and the same as he did in senior. It was everywhere he went, everybody said, well, he won't do that at the next level, and he did. Kevin Downey, eventually a teammate at St. Mary's, was an opponent when in high school. And while at St. Pat's High, his job was to guard Ross. We're playing against Ross out at the old Sackville High pitch, which was basically a gravel pitch. And I remember uh, we were having a, it was a playoff game, we were having a tough time uh, against Sackville High. It was a close game. I think they ended up beating us by one goal. Um, but I remember Ross uh, received a free kick and we set up the wall and Ross took the shot. And I remember it hit my arm and I thought, I thought it broke my arm. The shot was so hard and I ended up having to go to hospital and luckily it wasn't broken, but Ross had a powerful kick. I think we were all a little bit surprised, but uh, at the extent of uh, his success, but um, really when, when I think back on it, he, Ross was a superstar in the high school scene, um, you know, household name. They talked about Ross in all the talk shows. Uh, so uh, Ross really just continued what he'd been doing. Sidey was also a striker on the Huskies. He was often the setup man for the guy he called Mr. Automatic. Gave him a chance, he would score. Um, you know, and I was talking to somebody the other day, and they said, "Oh yeah, I remember. Um, you know, you had to mark him, and if you didn't, and that's you know, if you slipped up once, he, he would score. And he could shoot with both feet, and he could head the ball better than than anybody else around here. And and uh, um, and he could jump, you know." higher than anybody else too so he could get to that ball you could put the ball higher up and he could get to it and usually it went in the net. Rumor has it that Ross had a dislike for practice and training yet Clements and the team members gave him some slack because they knew he was always in shape ready to play and he was a leader. Ross is, is a bit of a is a bit of a legend when it comes to the, the our runs at St. Mary's. There is rumor that he ended up taking a bus back once from we used to run to Point Pleasant Park but I'm, I'm not going to confirm that or deny it, but uh, um, he did know the bus route from, from the bottom of the park up. And uh, I do recall running, um, I, I think he cried when he found out that, that uh, half of the park disappeared with, with Juan because he knew all the, the back trails that we could, could linger and catch up with the rest of the group later on. So Ross would save his energy for the games. He didn't like to use his energy too much during practice, and that was a bit of a bone of contention uh, on occasion. But Ross was focused. Um, if things weren't going the way he thought they should, uh, all he had to do was he'd shoot a little look to his teammates and uh, say, guys, let's get it going. And so Ross was the, uh, uh, although he didn't always wear the uh, uh, captain's armband, Ross was the unofficial leader of most teams he was on, and uh, um, he led by example. Ross played on provincial age group teams, a Canada Games team, and went on to many years of senior soccer, taking his teams to provincial titles and national tournaments, including the 1990 Nationals at Baisley Field in Dartmouth, when his Dartmouth United Moosehead Club won a silver medal. It is said he scored more than 800 goals from the time he suited up at junior high through his last days in recreational over 35 soccer. Included are 77 goals at the ultra-competitive CIS level, a mark that could stand for even more decades than the three decades already passed. A natural scorer and a born leader, a man who shunned the spotlight as much as possible while sharing his accomplishments with his team. He is the newest member in the athlete category to the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame, Mr. Ross Webb. I'm going to come up and give you stuff, okay? To make the certificate presentation, Andrew Waugh, the Assistant Director for News Projects at the Chronicle Herald. The pin presentation, teammate and friend since high school, Mr. Jim Seide.
I think tonight is the night to come clean about the bus. Well, as most people know, St. Mary's runs down the south end, and number nine bus goes right from the training field down through the park. And if you time it right, you can come back to the, the, the uh, stadium right on time. <laughs> My problem was once, I came back about seven minutes early, so Coach Clemens said, but, you know, what are you doing here? So that's been uh, my last chance to that one. Right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> you, you were scoring 77 goals, so he said, take the bus whenever you want, probably. <laughs> um, uh, of all the ones you scored, Ross, are, are there one, two, three that stand out to this day? No. No. <laughs> yeah. No, really, why would there be? <laughs> Excellent point. Um, let's talk about the sport, though. Obviously, you, you played it as, as a junior high kid, great success, high school as well. What's the art of scoring goals in soccer? What worked for you? I think the first thing, you have to have a good coach. We had Don McVicker. He put together you know, a tremendous team. I met Jim Sidey in high school. We stayed together through the next 12 years. And the, and the most, uh, I say the greatest thing is the chemistry. If you know your players, and you know the chemistry of them, it just works out, it's great. How close did you come to playing pro soccer? Well, actually I didn't. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I know, but, but how close did you come to possibly playing pro soccer? Well, the first year at St. Mary's was a big year for all of us. And uh, at that time, Toronto wanted to sign and uh, with Bob Hayes, his athletic director, and uh, Coach Clements, we had a discussion that was basically, they wanted to sign right away, which meant you had to give up university. And uh, St. Mary's is, is like a home, and uh, stay there. And as you say, no regrets to this day? None. Perfect. Here he is, folks, Ross Webb, one of the best ever. <laughs> Those are called closed-ended questions when they can be answered with yes or no, and you really should never ask them as a good interviewer. <laughs> Think I would have learned.